Welcome to a very special edition of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. And Larry Hedrick and I are right here by Bayus Butte that we mentioned in the Dragoon Pistols yes. episode. And there was so much more to talk about up here. We had to get up here, we did a hike. I actually did an opening before this, before we actually went up there, but we found that it's so special the things that we found up there and how hard it was to get there, that we had to do something different here to tell you that we are going up into this crevice right there. We are going to find an actual prospect, an old prospect. Tell us about it. Well, if, if our viewers had watched uh, episode two of uh, The Lost Dragoon Pistols, it gave the background of how I became involved in the Queen Valley area and by use Butte with Hart Mullins. Um, in 1958, Hart and his brother took my dad and I up to a, a mine that, um, that was explained in episode two and showed us uh, a pit that was dug there. And you know, the Mullins family were true pioneers of Arizona. His father, Fred Mullins, was a stagecoach driver, and Hart himself was born in 1890. I mean, Mesa was only a dozen years old. The Silver King mine had just barely been found. Uh, all this was total wilderness up in here. And he was, uh, he was 15 when Apache Trail was finished, and he was 21 when uh, Roosevelt Dam was finished in uh, 1911 and he homesteaded uh, the Queen Valley area. And um, it was about that time in 1915, he was 25 when he found this mine. And that makes it from today that he found this mine 103 years ago. <laughs> so this is a really old dig and it wasn't dug by him. Anyway, we came up and, uh, and looked it all over and I found that wheelbarrow that we'd talked about and, and that was handmade and, and, and that type of thing. So as we decided to go look at it ourselves, <laughs> we spent, it doesn't look like it's that far. No, it doesn't look that much. But it was four and a half hours oh, to get a grueling, there. grueling, grueling. I wouldn't even call it hiking. So I would, some of the slopes <laughs> were mountain climbing. 60% slopes of yeah. loose diluvial material. Well, look material. at your arm there, yeah, your arm, and mine's healing now. So. <laughs> and uh, the last 100 yards took an hour in itself to get there. And Dave was the first one to get to, to the top. That's the producer, and Dave here. That, that, <clears throat> It took him 15 or 20 minutes just to go the last 10 yards because well, the brush had totally. If you remember, overgone. we were, I, at least I was so tired, I said, Dave, just get some pictures and come on down. <laughs> I'm not going up there because I was so sick. I know. I was sick. You weren't feeling well. And Dave says, you got to come up here. You, you have to take a look at this. Okay. <laughs> so we had to blaze another trail to get up there because there was no trail. And to, right to the end, there used to be four or 500 yards of trail that was handmade by somebody right up against the cliffs where they leveled off the alluvial, alluvial fan there and made a, that trail. But there was only 50 yards of it left. Mm. And that's what we had to negotiate right at the end and why it was so tough with the cat claw and oh, everything just gee. tearing us to pieces. It was awful. And the one thing I was certain of is that um, nobody had been there since I had been there. There's just no and way. And so that is 1950s, 50 58. 58. Nobody had Now been what about there. that ladder that's up there? We need to, somebody's well, gonna say, wait a minute, that ladder is a little more modern. Well, Hart died two years later in, okay. in 1960, and his brother, Jesse, lived on after that, and they were working this. Okay. They, they were not looking for an ore body. They were not digging in an ore body. You know, part of the legend of the Lost Dutchman was that the Peraltas came up here in a large party and were working several areas. And they, they were caching some of the ore that they couldn't take back with them. I mean, once they got a, a load, they, they just cached the rest of it. And that's what Hart was looking for. He was looking for a cache that they had left behind. And this mine is old enough. I mean, when he was born, it was only 43 years after the famous, infamous Peralta massacre. <laughs> You know, yeah, and uh, so this Fits is a really timeline. old, and the tight the timbers that's up across the top oh, of yeah. the of the of the dig are native to this area. When I was there in '58, there were no trees in, in front of the cave, 
and now there are six inch diameter trunks of these trees that have grown up. You can't see the cave from here for love or money. And those were so rotten, those same kind of trees were so rotten, they were there long before Hart found this. Well, now you've talked to some people who are experts on the Superstition Mountains. Oh. And you've talked to some of them, we won't mention names, yeah. but we've, you've talked to some of them, they had no idea about this. Nobody Nothing. knows that mine is there, but, but us three now. We have talked about it and we looked, I went down in that prospect, that mine, and it doesn't look like anyone would have thought there was gold down there, but you were talking about caches, caches. of gold, and this could have been a perfect place to hide caches The best of gold. hiding place in the world. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking your life in your own hands yeah. to go there, and I recommend that nobody tries it. Welcome to a very, very special edition of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains, where we're going up and find what could possibly be one of the Spanish prospects of the Peraltas. And it's it took a long time getting up there, but we're gonna show you everything that we did up there and it was amazing. And here we go. This is incredible. This is amazing. Is that there's a ladder there, and uh, this is incredible. So, Hart Mullins believed that this was one of the original Peralta mines. Peralta mines, at least a Spanish mine. And you know, we're on the east side here. Yeah. And one of the big theories is everyone's looking in the wrong place. Some people believe that uh, the Lost Dutchman mine uh, is in the on the east side. So. Uh, I'm telling you right now, this is not the Lost Dutch. You mean mine. on the west side? Uh, well, on the west side. Yeah. They believe it's on the west side, and some, well, and then people believe it's on the east side here, but this is not the Lost Dutch mine. And of course, on the way, the way up here, we saw all the symbols that are on the maps. We saw the three red hills. We saw everything that applies to the Lost Dutch, and I can see why Hart believes this is a Peralta date. We got pictures of, of the the panorama there from the Ruth map, the three red hills. It, it is an amazing thing that uh, lends a little bit of credence to it being on the east side and not the west. It's, uh, and it's been 60 years for you. 60 years. Been here. I'm impressed. <laughs> but we made it and uh, it was well worth the trip. It took us, what, three and a half hours? Four and a half Four, hours. four and a half hours to get here. And I'll tell you what. I don't recommend anybody come up here and spend four and a half hours to get to this spot. You can watch what we're doing and you'll know as much as we do. Yeah, so there you go. This is not something that you should come and try to look for. But it's Hart Mullins' mine, and he believed... Will you tell the story? Tell us a little bit about that. If you recall in our previous episodes, uh, I had told you that my dad retired out here in Mesa, and I was working for Pete Allen at Queen Valley, and uh, Pete must introduce my dad to Hart because I'd never met him, and they all pulled in the yard one day, and so since I was there, I went along, and we went to uh, Elephant Butte and Buzzard's Roost to some claims they had, and then Hart brought us up here, and uh, it wasn't near as brushy as it is now. Obviously, nobody's been up here nobody's for quite been some up time. Here we for had to many actually years. make a trail, yeah. But Hart uh, told us the entire legend right here in this spot about the Lost Dutchman. First time I had ever heard it, 1958. First time my dad had ever heard it. And then he brought us here and he claimed that he believed this was a, one of the Peralta mines. And he was working it. He left, uh, that's a redwood ladder. It, looks, it hasn't aged much at all, but uh, he, this cutout wasn't here at the time. 
and uh, he died in 1960, so he spent a couple of years for so the you, work on this. You think that's his ladder? I think that's his ladder okay. now that I see how difficult it was to get in here, and nobody's been here for ages. Yeah, so it possibly would be his ladder, and uh, it's, it's guarded from, any, uh, from rain and anything like that. But, you know, this goes down, what would you say, about 30 feet? Oh, at least, yeah. Yeah, and they've got some of the original wood here that it looks like was used. At least I'm guessing that uh, was some of the original. This is the trees that's in the local area here, mm -hmm. like this tree here. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what we may be at, now we're not saying it's positive, but what is believed to be one of the Spanish mines, one of the Peralta mines, up here on the east end. Yes. Um, uh, on the east end. And some people have the theories that this is where it was all happening. So there's all sorts of different theories. Well, of course, that handmade uh, uh, patented uh, wheelbarrow mm -hmm. was uh, as much proof that it was Mexican as anything. That was a handmade thing except for the wheel, which was cast. And that was around here? That was just over the cliff here. But it's obviously not there anymore. No, they, I, my dad took it home. And okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, after right. he died, it was stolen. <laughs> okay. But they, they right. didn't take it out of here. Once they were through, they just dumped it over the cliff, and I found it down at the bottom of the cliff. Well, if you didn't tell us that this was here, we'd have never found it. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think, like you said, I, I don't think anybody's been up here forever. The, I, I confused myself as we come up here because we didn't come the way we did. It was much rougher <laughs> than than back then. I mean, it's, it's incredible how rough it was. Mm -hmm. And this is also bear country. The, the couple of times that I've been here, 58 and 68, uh, there was a senator from uh, Iowa and uh, a friend that uh, I'd met through the work that I did. I used to fly all over the North American continent uh, making repairs on photographic equipment and stuff, and I met them, and I told them the Lost Dutchman legend at their house. And they actually come all the way down here just to come to this point. So 1968 was the last time I was here. Well, whether it's a Lost Dutchman mine or a Spanish mine, it's still historic. Oh, absolutely. It, it looks like there's a drift going. Yeah, there, I'm there. not going down there. To no, find out. no, no, no. You'd have to be pretty brave to try that ladder now. But I don't have any legs left. I don't know about <laughs> you. <laughs> not, 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 not after the trip up here. But we wanted to come up here and show all of you this, and uh, we'd like to thank Larry for bringing us oh. up here. Anything else you want to say about this mine? I'm not coming back. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Larry, we had to wait a week until we, we uh, rec recuperated to get back out here to do a close. I'm still unsteady on my feet. <laughs> but here we are, Bayou Spute. I have to tell you, this is the hardest hike we've been to so far, and hopefully we're not going to have another hike like this, at least not this year, until we mend. But there was no trail. Uh, there was growth everywhere that we had to either cut down or or knock down we didn't have a machete which that was our fault but it was a grueling grueling four hours to get to this mine and uh, please do not attempt it now we're giving you a lot of information as to where it is all you have to do is just drive down and see where it where it is and you can match it up here by by dispute but I'm encouraging people not, not to do it, not to do it. This is not just your everyday hike through First Water or Needle Canyon or anything like this. This is really bad. And uh, uh, do not go alone and make sure you have lots and lots of water and, and something to eat because it's gonna take you some time if you do. And I know some of you will, but I'm telling you, Please, on my advice, don't try it. This is one of the things that we like to show to you as what's out here. It's all part of the mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.